You might be wondering how I got in this situation. Allow me to explain. But first, we have to go to the beginning. Alright YouTube, it's been a while. Today we are reopening the can of worms that is the Benchmaster milling machine. I apologize if some of this footage feels disjointed. That's because it is. A lot of this footage is from a year ago, with the most recent bits maybe being from six months ago. But before we dive in, let me preface. I am by no means a professional, so take what I say and do with a grain of salt. Because at the end of the day, I'm just a guy monkeying around in a machine shop. Oh shit. But maybe I can show you you can do fun stuff too. My name's Marcos, and you're watching Backyard Machinist. <clears throat> the Benchmaster Milling Machine, also sold under the brand name Duro, was manufactured in Los Angeles in the 1950s. It was marketed to hobbyists as an affordable machine tool that could easily fit in the home workshop while maintaining a respectable weight of around 200 pounds. In a previous video, I shared the process of tearing down the Benchmaster and just getting it generally back on its feet. Feel free to watch that video if you want more details on all that. But there is one major problem that I should mention, and that is the spindle. Well, not the spindle per se, but maybe the fact that there was a Morse 2 taper stuck in there that wouldn't want to come out, no matter what I tried. So I felt there was no other option than to cut the arbor off and machine out the remnants of the taper inside the spindle. Oh, but nothing ever goes as planned, does it? Measuring concentricity with this test bar verified off camera revealed about nine thousandths of run out, which is totally unacceptable. Over at the spindle nose, indicator says four and a half thousandths. So not only is the taper that I cut not concentric, it's also not parallel with the spindle. So that's pretty lousy if I want any sort of precision from this machine, unfortunately. I think what I may try doing is reaming this out on the machine itself. After giving it some more thought, an idea began to form. One that would use this weird tool post grinder. And a sign bar. I then whipped up an arbor, cause you guessed it, we're gonna do some internal grinding. But this one ended up having some issues. I'll allow my former self to explain. So this is the grinding arbor I already made, but it has about 27 thousandths of run out. This is from Little Machine Shop, and it's a grinding, uh, cylindrical grinding attachment for the mini lathe um, that mounts with two little bolts. So there are a couple of things that I'd like to change about this arbor. One being that this flat, these flats here are up against the face, making it so that there's a bit of a gap here. I want to move these over to the side so that there's as much contact with this face here. I'd also like to replace this grinding stone with this one here. Just like your standard aluminum oxide die grinding thing. I got these at Home Depot and I have several of them. They're easy to come by. Um, and it's smaller so I won't have to remove this with a diamond thing. The new arbor will hopefully have this inserted into the, into the arbor with a set screw. Despite turning the first arbor between centers, it still had a significant amount of run out. So I knew that it had to do with my lathe being out of alignment. After confirming I could trust this test bar over on the service plate, I took it over to the lathe to make sure my centers were coaxial. Luckily I was able to align my lathe just by adjusting the tailstock. It didn't seem to have any significant twist in the bed. If you want a really good video on how to align your lathe in a more comprehensive way, check out Blondie Hacks, Quinn Dunkey over there has a wealth of knowledge and she has a really good video on how to uh, shim your lathe and level it properly to make sure it's totally dialed. With that out of the way, let's get down to remaking the arbor. We'll start off by facing some 5 8 steel bar stock. Then center drilling both sides. Before turning between centers, it is best practice to apply high pressure grease to the centers, but I'm just using what I have on hand, some automotive grease. Ah. 
I'm turning down the longer portion of the arbor to half inch, as this is the largest size that will fit inside the space of a Morse taper, but that is also a common fractional collet size. And I just want to say I love these old brown and sharp micrometers. They just look so sleek. Alright, so we've got the half inch portion of the grinding arbor turned, and we're just going to clean this up. It'll probably be a little bit smaller than the 0.62 because of some marring here. It's not a critical dimension, so let's get to it. And lastly, we'll face this side of the arbor. And of course, we can't forget to chamfer. Now we can switch to the forejaw to get the far end drilled and reamed a quarter inch for the grinding bit. Then I flip the part to clean up the last little bit that couldn't be faced between centers. the spiral flute tap. We're gonna tap under power. Oh yeah. Woo! All right, here's all the lathe work done. We've got the end uh, tap for M6, ream for quarter inch, got our chamfer and various dimensions on there. All right, let's get over to the mill and mill these two flats, and then this part will be complete. Well, let's not forget about the set screw too, and then it will be complete. Nothing crazy about this setup here. We've just got the hex block here to uh, mill either side of the flats, and a threaded rod in a one, two, three block bolted to the vise to have a repeatable position or an, uh, being used as an end stop. I want to be able to use my 12 millimeter wrench on it. So we're currently at 0.6. We want to be here with a little bit of clearance for the wrench to slip on. So we got to take off 76,000 or 67 thousandths from either side. Okay, so we got the final depth set. Activate repeatability. Oh shit. If I did the math right, this 12 millimeter wrench should go on. And it does. 12 millimeter converts to 4.72 inches. I cut this to 4.66. 6 millimeters of clearance. It's a bit loose. I think in the future I won't be so generous with that clearance, but it'll work. We're doing it old school. Here we've got the cross slide and the top slide from the lathe, and this is a cylindrical grinding attachment, and the arbor you guys saw me turn in another video. We're going to set it to a Morse taper 2 angle, and then grind the spindle. So, a Morse 2 taper angle is 1.4307 degrees, so with my sign bar, I need a 62... 624,000 stack to achieve that angle knowing that my sign bar is 2.5 inches long so we're going to set that up and with the compound slide and top slide cro uh, cross slide and top slide scraped from the previous videos there'll be reliable reference surfaces for us to grind this angle please feel free to check out my previous videos on this topic while I'm a total novice at scraping, they show anyone can unlock more precision from a hobby import tool like a mini lathe 
with just some persistence and elbow grease. To get this angle perfect, we got a 0.2 gauge block, then a 0.37, then a half thou shim in between that. That should be our 1.407 degree angle or whatever it was. It took a while to get the sign mar parallel to the mill's x-axis. It's always the setup that takes longer in machining, never the actual cutting. Before anything else takes place, I need to turn the OD of this face since I cleaned it up on the lathe and it's no longer concentric in theory to the axis of movement of the Benchmaster spindle. So I've got a boring bar to reach its carbide so it shouldn't flex too much. I've got a dial indicator right here. I'm just going to just take off a little bit. That's zero right there. So that's a five thousandths cut right there. Then we'll lock the table. Start up the motor. And I'll feed with the table of the Benchmaster since the compound from the lathe is already at an angle. Anyway, here we go. Okay, so with that all said and done, we're going to switch from the uh, lathe quick change tool post to the cylindrical grinding attachment to the lathe. Okay, so it is essential that this tool grinder be cutting on center, otherwise we're going to be cutting a compound angle and not the more taper 2 angle that we're going for here. So I'm going to measure the OD of this spindle nose and use the height gauge to set this on center. It is 1.475 plus 4. It's 1.479. Okay, so indulge me for a moment if you would. So this would be really easy if our reference surface wasn't moving up and down with the knee. Our reference surface being this the Benchmaster's table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with the height gauge this is the spindle of the machine, and this is the spindle of the tool post grinding attachment attached to the table. We just established that the diameter of this is 1.4479. So we're going to go to the with the height gauge, touch on the top, go down the radius, zero it out, all the while touching on the table with the bottom of the height gauge, and then go up and measure where we are. And if we're exactly on center, then the height from that zero point, the center line, to there should be the radius of the tool post grinding attachment, which is 0 0.316. So if it's a little low, then, you know, we'll go higher, and, and if it's high, then vice versa. But I'll use the dial indicator on the table uh, to measure that difference, and then put it on center line and then do one more check. We're gonna measure this. Start at the top of the Benchmaster spindle. Zero it out. Go down radius. Okay, 0.7395. So that is technically center line there. So we will zero it out. And then with that zero mark set, we're gonna go to the top of the Tool post grinding attachment spindle. And this is at 0.375 when it should be at 0.316, so it's a little high. A little bit of math shows that it is uh, 59 thousandths tall. So we need to bump the whole thing down by 59 thousandths, and that's where the dial indicator comes in handy. So we'll do that now. That's 10. So that's center height right there. We'll lock it out. That shouldn't move for the rest of the operations in the machine.
Let's get our abrasive trued up against a diamond dresser. It's time to make some sparks. Grinder's spinning at 6,000 RPM, and I've got the Benchmaster spinning at around 400 to 600 RPM in the opposite direction. As I'm sure you've noticed, I've got the vacuum running, and I've got some shop towels down to protect the mill from grinding dust. I'll shut up now and let you guys watch some grinding in peace. I know, I know. The finish is nothing to write home about. Many things could have been improved. Using coolant, balancing the arbor better, dialing in the speeds and feeds, but at least there's hopefully a concentric surface that is the right angle. Uh, what's this guy doing? Well, I'll tell you, deep-voiced viewer. The short answer is, I messed up. So, definitely wasn't ideal. Seems like this is nice and concentric, but the taper got way too wide, so I had to face off a bunch of material to where it's flush right here. But, as you can see, it's really concentric. And if you measure further in, very concentric for sure. At least there's a usable tool now, as I'm just sitting here. That'll be accurate somewhat. Now I haven't inspected any of this other tooling. So let's do just that. This tap in a drill chuck revealed about a half thousandths of run out. And this unhardened 3 8 blank showed it was only out by about a thousandth. I ended up turning down this 3 8 blank to half inch and inserted it into the end of the arbor that got cut off last video. Unfortunately, I didn't record this process, because at this point in the project, I was getting to be pretty disillusioned with filming, feeling like it was making everything take longer when I was already pressed for time. But as you can see from this photo of the setup for reaming the arbor with a half-inch undersized reamer, pushed the bed of my mini lathe to its absolute limit. Here's a view of the arbor once it was bored out. I warmed up the arbor with a torch and cooled the blank to help in assembling this two thou interference fit. As much as I'd like to get to cutting already, I feel uncomfortable proceeding without pinning the arbor to the blank. I could do this over at the big Cincinnati mill, but I feel like the most precise way to be to do it in situ. So to make that happen, I've got a TAG motor here with a TAG headstock. The plan is to center drill. Pre-drill a through hole with a number 31 drill, then ream with an undersized 8th inch reamer. Then an 8th inch drill rod will get inserted. I've got the spindle immobilized with some clamps over here, and with the rack and pinning on the table's x-axis, drilling should have a pretty smooth action. I use the height gauge to get the drill on center with the arbor, similar to the setup when grinding earlier. Some oil before we get started. It was at this point that I started to get a little worried, as the center drill seemed like it was having a hard time, like I had worked hard in the surface somehow. But with at least a small dimple formed, I decided to press on with the number 31 drill. Oof, hard landing. I guess that lever feed isn't so fine after all. It seemed to break through the hardened layer though. I continued pecking with the drill along the way. until it came out the other side. I then set the pulleys to the lowest speed before reaming. Unlike drilling, you don't really want to peck while reaming.
Unfortunately, in my haste, I grabbed the nominal 8th inch reamer, making for more of the sliding fit you see here. I remedied the situation by peening the ends of the hole with the center punch and using some Loctite. What? Don't act like you haven't been there. Voila, there's the arbor pinned. Okay, the long awaited moment. We're actually going to use the Benchmaster. I've got the vise sitting here at an angle, just because I'm feeling sassy. This is just a piece of aluminum here, so it's just a test cut, just to kind of, you know, get the ants out of our pants and finally see this thing cut. Raising the table to touch off. I'm wearing a face shield because I don't know what to expect. Since the rack and pinion is pretty fast speed, I'm going to make the RPM pretty fast. This first pass didn't really take away any material. Next I tried a 20,000th step of cut. Yeah. Don't want to climb mill, bad idea. I had a hard time keeping the feed slow and consistent. I think in the future I'll remake the handle I made in the first video about this mill and replace it with a much longer one. Let's touch off again to try out this 60 degree pointed cutter next. I'm just going to make a series of 30 thou depth grooves with a 100 thou step over. I was kind of imagining this kind of setup working well for machining thread rolling dies perhaps. Lastly, I wanted to try my hand at making a slot. This one was cut in a series of 40 thou passes. Hey, not too shabby. However, I do think a longer lever would go a long way towards improving the surface finish. But I mean like dudes, the Benchmaster's back in service. I'm excited to see what role it'll have in the shop as I get to know its abilities better. When I first got this machine, I imagined using it for slitting operations, like this bicycle quill stem I brazed would need to make the clamp for the handlebars, or this tube block. Now, you might be asking, why did I go through all the effort of cutting the stuck Morse 2 taper from the arbor and going on this whole fiasco, only to install that same arbor again, something I could have done from the very beginning? The reason is because I wanted to be able to install other Morse 2 tooling to allow the mill to do way more stuff. Tooling like these collets that can hold stuff like end mills or what have you. Or even things like uh, a three jaw chuck to turn a horizontal mill into a temporary lathe. Or maybe even attaching a faceplate to turn large objects that can't fit on my small mini lathe. Sure, there are things with this project that aren't fully complete, like this handle that's a little loose-fitting and too short. I also need to make a proper enclosure for the electronics, and make a cage for the treadmill motor and large pulley in the back. But making chips is a major milestone in a long journey. Is any machine tool in a home shop really ever done being modified or optimized? If you've stuck with me this far, thank you. This is my longest video to date. I could have made this a three-parter, but it didn't feel right not completing this project after such a long wait. I hope you learned something or found this video entertaining. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.